All right, so I've talked in the past of how we do our invoicing with Invoice Ninja and kind of our workflow for when a problem comes in and how we create the invoice as a draft and move it over uh, right to an invoice for quick billing and you know getting paid quickly. And we've been using Invoice Ninja for a little while and we've also started using the projects and task system. And I wanted to cover that because not everything is simply just an invoice. Sometimes you have a project and there's a bunch of small hourly billing things that go to it. We have a few IT clients like this and we certainly have a lot of our work that we do on the LTS Creative side, which is the web business um, that gets built out in projects and tasks as well. Now let me uh, di dive into a little bit here and also explain something. First, you can have tasks without a project. So the task system works independent of a project, but a project allows you to group all those tasks into one, so to speak, uh, container. So the relationship is I can just have a task and create a series of things with that task and bill it to a client or a series of tasks and bill it to the client, um, but I don't need to have a project for that. But if I do have a project, the project will cumulatively organize all those tasks. I can set all the tasks for a project and then I can just build the project, which will sub-bill all the tasks related to it in one click. So you can do it either way. So if you are just doing, and we have a couple, we have an IT customer that wants us to do a bunch of little billings that are a bunch of small little things we do that we accumulate and we send them a bill one, uh, once a month of all the little things that go on and it summarizes it for us. So we just create a series of tasks for that versus a project each month because it's a little bit easier. So let's kind of show you how this works. So we'll first start with the task side of this. So task, choose a client and we got Dewey, Cheatham and Howe in here. There's no projects. So let's type a project in here. Some project work. Well, some task, I should say it's not a task. Task, well, I can't spell today. Some task work. Just fill it in with some blah, blah, blah. So this is whatever task work we did, some task work and some other thing. Oops, I'm gonna delete that. And some other things. So there we go, we have a task and some other things in here. And we wanna go ahead and just start the timer, start. And right away, it starts the timer. Now, if we go over here to tasks, we can see it's logged and running. There's a little time tracker that pops up. Now, this is kinda of cool because they have a desktop app to connect this with. Uh, so you can use it as a desktop app or you can use this. I prefer just to use it in a window because this means I can close this and start and stop things and edit the times in it. Um, and if I wanted to, there's no, like I said, there's no project, so it would tell me what project it is. And let's go ahead and create another task. So let's close this and create another two task. Set up website, oh, we'll say WordPress. And we'll go ahead and say manual. We know that's gonna take us a certain amount of time, so we'll assign the time instead of letting it pick. So we're gonna say that'll go from 12.30 to one o'clock. 30 minutes, save. And now there's a text for that, we'll save it. And we'll do one more task for them. Fix printer. And we'll do that one as a timer. So now we go back over to tasks. We have the three tasks going for uh, do we achieve and how. These two are running, this one's just logged. And we can pull up that time tracker window again and we can see each one. And we can stop or resume them and or add more time to it. So pretty, pretty straightforward. And like I said, I can close windows and all that. All this doesn't matter. It's all running on the web server. So you do actually have to remember as well to go back in and stop and start these tasks as well. So if once you started them and you do close all this, it's, closing it doesn't stop the task, just so you know. Uh, so you do have to make sure you do it. If you forget about it, you're like, oh, I, you can go back in and manually adjust it. So we have the printer one running, uh, this not running and this one. Now, because this already has a time on it, we can add more time to it. So now we have an hour, but then we ran into more time. So now we started another time for this one. And then uh, I'll go ahead and, oh, it's got a time overlap in it because of the timing on there. I'll discard the changes and close that. Now, if we go back over to the dashboard, we can also see all the different tasks that are running over here. So we can go to this one here and we'll stop it. And because we have a future time and another time, I'm just going to delete the time off of there. So now we have that one hit save. 
pretty straightforward how to do this. Now, of course, how do you build it all? So let's go ahead and uh, stop these. So we'll pop up this because it's easy to use a time tracker. Stop, stop. You notice the little green bar next to them. And it stopped. So now we have all these not running. They can be resumed. Let me refresh the page again. And they're all right here. Now, it also has this, so you can do status tracking. It's, uh, I don't know how to say it, Kanban, Kanban. Uh, I usually just label these as like created here, ready to do, and you can drag these around to how they're going. And you see how that changes the status here for created, in progress, ready to do. If you use that feature, we're actually not using that part as much right now. Uh, we're still kind of playing with it. But that allows you to kind of, you know, set the project and say where each of these tasks are in its process. And you can easily, as I've shown you here, rename them just by clicking at the top and calling them whatever you want in progress or, you know, completed if you wanted to, however you wanted to say that or even create a few more of these on here so you can kind of lay your project out or tasks this, this, uh, that works inside of both. All right, so let's go ahead and invoice these tasks. So we're going to say here's these tasks here for do achievement how. We're going to hit invoice. And away we go. It is now invoiced, and uh, there it is. There's the tasks. There's the times under it. And let me expand out the details so you can see what's going in here. All the multiple start and stop times, everything falls into here. I only had one time for each of these, but it would lay out all the different times in there so they would show up on the sheet here. So pretty slick. And then I could hit send invoice and uh, away you go. So I'm just gonna mark sent. I'm actually don't have email set up in this. And we go to these tasks. Now they have status of invoice. So we know that they're good. And if we wanna clear them out of there, we'll just archive them. Now those tasks are done. Now let's do the same thing, start it as a project. So new project, client. Dewey Cheatham and how name new computers due date they like these new computers by Saturday budget of five hours a task rate of 150 they want new computers they want some Dells dude so there's a little project description all right project successfully created now let's first task. Order the Dells, dude. And we know when we're going to order them, so we're going to say we'll order them on Thursday. And there's an hour of time in the ordering. There, just so you make the times nice and clean. Save. Now go back over to the project, and we can see the task for it. So here's the task start date. There's an hour of the task going to be in there, and you're starting to accumulate. So that's 20% of the hours on there. So let's do another new task. Set up new computers. And uh, that'll start on Friday. We'll set up the new computers. Actually, we'll set a time. So Friday at 12.15. And then we'll just say that's going to take up three hours of time to set those new computers up. Hit save. Now we we'll go back over and look at the project again. Whoops. All right, now you're kind of getting a timeline for this project. So now we're here, here, and then uh, we've used up 80%, so another hour left on that project. So we're going to head in new, one more new task. Deliver computers. And they wanted them Saturday, so we'll choose the time of noon. Whoops, and then we'll choose the date of Saturday. And we'll put one more hour in for that. Start at noon, should be finished by one. Save. And there you go. Here's those notes, you know, they want new computers. They want some Dells, dude. 100% of the hours, there's three tasks divided up. You see the hours cumulative till you hit the five hour max budget for there. 
And this is that Kanban, but just for this. So instead of seeing anything else, here is the statuses you can drag around. Uh, you could even do things like put people's names in here to assign them like that so they would know. It doesn't really have a notification system, so it like notifies like a full-blown huge project manager where you give it names and it emails each person about the tasks you're supposed to do. It's a little bit more manual, but that actually works fine for us. We know who's doing what tasks, um, and we have other methodologies like using some spreadsheets to really get a bigger picture tracking of what goes on with projects um, and who's assigned to what. But this allows you to pretty easily go through and then we can start and stop these tasks as needed or drag them to whatever status they're in based on that. So drag them back over here and go to the project. Now, to make it simpler, we can build these tasks out. Here's those tasks showing and here's the project new computers that they're attached to. So you can see the client name, what the project are attached to versus if you create a task for that client like we did before. with no hours at all in it, go to tasks, and this one doesn't have a project. Of course, that makes it easy to filter, so you could filter by the project or filter however you want it on there. And here's the test that shows up in this, but when you start at the project, go here and click on it. It's only the ones related to this. So that's the difference between the project uh, Kanban versus tasks, new computers, Kanban project for that versus the bigger one. And like I said, for billing purposes, now let's pretend this project's complete. Let's go to the tasks again. So I think one of them didn't have any hours in it or they did. Okay, they did. Just the test one doesn't. So we're going to go over here to project again. Invoice. Now all those tasks, their dates, times, and information. Away you go. Now they're all assigned and built out into an invoice. So there's your invoice total based on the hours and the information put in there. And of course, you can still add to this invoice and other details and errata and extra parts that might have been needed uh, for it. But like I said, it makes it really easy if you're doing that type of billing to create and build that system. So let me go ahead and save it as a draft. Actually, was market is sent. So we can. Uh, pretend we send it to the client. This is the free account, so the emailing option, I believe. Yeah, it won't work. It won't send an email. This is the free account to do that. Like I said, I'm not using it in my self-hosted system. There's too much client data in there, and I didn't feel like trying to blur all that out. That's always a pain uh, from an editing standpoint. The last thing I'm going to show you will actually be in our production system here uh, because I want to show you the reporting. You don't get the reporting with the free version. Now, I've got to blur out some of the client names and details on here, but what this is showing you is some of the hours that are billed out uh, based over time. So you run the task, group by client. I can also group by project, group by user, and it would break down how all these are going. Now I'm gonna scroll down, like I said, I gotta blur out the data because uh, I don't share customer information there. But what you get an idea is uh, it's breaking down all the hours and this can easily be exported into like an Excel uh, option. So it's got XLS or a PDF. So you can run your own reports to gather uh, data on there. And maybe if you're watching your staff, you could even do it by uh, the projects done by your employees. And then you just change a subgroup over here to be by user. And you could just sort it all in Excel and you know play with the numbers however you want. But just the general reporting, if you want to know how many hours are on there or how many hours were done by task or grouped by client, they give you a pretty simple way of doing it. Uh, where you can group it by you know, uh, day, month, year, subgroup client, and then whatever date range you want to apply it for. So I just said the last couple days, uh, show me that. So it's pretty slick and it works really, really well for that. So hopefully this was helpful and uh, you can start playing with it. Like I said, there's a link below to sign up if you want to try out the Invoice Ninja. They have a free plan where it costs you nothing, no credit card needed to go start jumping on their website and uh, playing with some of the cool features in there. This is a really slick system. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you have some feedback, leave it in the comments below. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon to let YouTube know you'd like to know about new releases on videos. You can also find new releases on our website, lawrencesystems.com slash blog, where every video automatically gets posted so you can always find our videos, whether YouTube notified you or not. Also, if you'd like to hire us for consulting services, go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com, fill out the contact form, tell us about the project you would like us to help you with. We work with a lot of businesses, we work with a lot of other IT people who need services done. Also, if you want to help the 
channel out in other ways. We have a Patreon. We have right below me a Amazon store where you can check out some of the products we've reviewed and as many of them as available on Amazon. You can also check out the things we love. And that's an ever-evolving list of discount codes, offer codes, and different software and affiliates. You can find that on our website as well, or just follow it in the link below right to the Things We Love landing page, including the hot sauces we recommend, which is always changing. All right, once again, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.